Welcome back to Belly Guernsey Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallays and this is the channel where I take you out diving. I try and give you a feel of what it's like to go diving. If you can, that is. If you can go out diving, I'll suggest you uh, get your dive gear on and uh, get out there. So what we're gonna be doing today, unfortunately, Sylvia, the normal boat we go on is actually sick. Um, as Matt Armstrong would say, engine bad, engine real bad. So basically the head gasket's gone on it and that's getting repaired. So today we're gonna to be going out on Margaret, which is Richard's bigger boat, normally his chartered fishing boat. So you've probably all seen her before. She sat right on the end over there. And I think today it's just me, Matt and Richard going. We can't take Margaret on our own. Uh, Richard's gotta come with us. Right, let's get our gear ready and get down there. occasions. He is good. He knows that boat inside out. Fishing for uh, wet fish rather yeah, than shellfish. Yeah, yeah. If you like catching small bream, I think you do quite well with horse mackerel. <laughs> horse mackerel? Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, looks like a bit of a dim day today, so we shall go and see what the elements will let us catch. Welcome back below the waves. I'm JP Fallays and today we're diving at Anfre. We've dropped down onto the reef and it's very dark, very green. Two reasons why it's dark. One, very simple, the sun is now. And two, we're actually down behind a, a cliff edge in a way, or um, certainly on a, a staged area or a tiered or, or stepped area behind the reef. So we're not gonna find many scallops here. We might find a couple on the, on the slopes here or on the little sandy bits. But what I'm aiming to do is get right to the bottom and down onto the sand. And here we go, we've finally made it to the bottom of the reef. This is out onto the sand. The reason it's wobbling around so much is I'm trying to let out some uh, slack on my reel. Whilst holding my camera, whilst trying to mess around with loads of bits and bobs. So let's have a look. I could hear the theme tune for Jaws in the background and Matt comes around the reef to see me. Obviously I'm a lot easier to see than it is for me to see him because I've got big lights on. Hope I didn't blind him too much. I must have blinded him quite a bit because he missed a scallop there. I didn't blind him completely because he's got two decent sized ones. That one's huge. It's not the first he's got in his bag, so he'd be finding more. I guarantee you he'd get a lot more than me. Now, you're probably thinking the same as me. This is a horrendous seabed to be looking for scallops. 
cool to be looking at the side of the reef though. There's a little baby um, spider crab, boron sponges, pink sea fingers, soft corals flapping in the tide. Just shows how much tide there is there when you can see that flapping around. Having a good old wobble, look at it, it's like jelly. need to try and get away from this reef. Really hard to see stuff on this seabed. It's worth mentioning the tide is actually heading in a northerly direction so it's going to want to try and pull me down into sort of 50 metre-ish. Now it's not all that bad because in this depth of water they are quite big. At the 30 plus metres you're starting to find decent amounts. You go deeper you find even bigger ones. Um, it just means that the other divers have not been this deep. And that one's an exception because it's very small. As you know we leave the small ones there even if they're very close to size we don't even bother taking them up. There's no point. They only get chopped back over the side again when we uh, gauge them. careful because I'm not wearing a glove on my right hand and these can be very very sharp the reason I'm not wearing a glove on my right hand is I was going to do some macro filming and I needed the uh, manipulation of my fingers to be able to sort things out but that's not going to happen because the camera is already flooded so hey ho we carry on Also doesn't help when you get clip bits like there with big overhangs, kind of cast a shadow on you. Perfect if you're a dogfish and you're waiting for some prey to come through. Turn the lights off and just show you what it's like. I know the camera is picking up a bit of green water, but this um, it's fairly accurate to what you can see in real life, light level wise, anyway.
this seabed is rubbish. There's old oyster shells and old scallop shells and every single other shell you can think of. Really need to be trying to get away from this seabed. My issue is I've got to follow it. I've got to carry on along here. I either go right and then go into the deep, which I don't want to do, or I follow this reef all the way around. To be honest, I'm probably better off just abandoning the dive and going straight back to the surface, but I'll grip my teeth and carry on. I don't know why, but I've always wanted to feel what they were like, see how soft they are. So they had little uh, feeders coming out and gone back in. It is pretty soft. be able to tell here but I'm actually on a shelf of sand not I'm kind of halfway up the reef really and down to the right drops off fairly deep I think we're gonna have to bite the bullet and just drop down that's not that far here I think I will I'll drop down doesn't matter what I do, the tide seems to be pushing me into these corners here. So it's either up the reef, or up the little sandbank here. Oh, hang on, I know where I am, I recognise this. There's a trawl cable. I'm going to follow this trawl cable. I know, it, I know where it takes me. Up onto a little sandy patch up a gully. So let's follow this then. Big Rass, big Ballon Rass. It's always cool to see. There's a few scallops here, but this one looks too small. I'll leave that one. See some more over here near this old bottle. Is that one too small as well? Possibly. only two big enough there but I'll take them go with the other five I've got I think this is the sandy gully and the cable now drops off into deeper water yep it should actually be above the seabed somewhere. It should be strong across, if I remember rightly. Check my air. Oh, I've still got a bit left. Probably 20 or 30 bar before I've got to go up. And there's scallops here. They're not big enough though. There's also some more dogfish. 
They're everywhere at the moment. And this is it. This is the little sandy bit where it cuts across. I think we'll go on the southwesterly side of this. Drops over the edge of that and then goes down deep again. This way heads down deep. Matt's probably down there somewhere. So I'm going to skip over the top of this without getting tangled and start swimming up this way. Fingers crossed we get some more scallops. No use. The tide's just too strong. It just keeps wanting to pull me down into the deep. I'm trying to swim left, but my uh, buff's pulling me right, and the tide's trying to pull me right. Um, and in the right direction is north and north. You tend to end up going north, northeast, and it drops down into the deep. So I think I might have to call it a day on this one anyway. For the first dive, you can tell it's in a high tide area when you see this boring sponge and it's grown in like a, a fan across the tide yeah let's save the rest of the tank for the next dive still got loads left on the clock though 12 minutes well, well yeah. given uh, the dive location for scallops that's not too bad but your man's got about 10 dozen though because he was uh, deeper See how far out we are. Looks like you've hardly got any when it's on a big deck. <laughs> It's not quite as impressive on here. No. It's still a crate, it's good. I struggled to go where I wanted to go on my dive, but it was dark. There's a lot of smalls in that. A lot of smalls. Let me go back. He's not silly, he knows there's not food. <laughs> silly bird. He's tapping on the window for us to look. Yeah, we'll shoot it. Yeah. Oh, it's 30. I don't know what Matt had, Matt. I must have had more. How many did you have, Matt? So, uh, yeah. 94. 94, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, actually, some of those aren't yours. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had 30, but I think Matt's put some, a load more in there anyway. Ready for the next dive? <laughs> 53 minute surface interval there. That's long enough, we normally leave it an hour. The time we get out and go down. <coughs> Need the sun to come out. That last dive was dark. Yeah, it's good viz though. Good viz, yeah. We've had bad weather. Yeah. Some big tides. That isn't fun though, I think that's a jet taking off. new tank and we're gonna see if we can use the whole thing up it's only a dumpy 12 it's not like my 15 I normally use 
Second dive is always shallower. That's the way we normally do our dives. So we're probably only about 22 meters here. Almost 23, and straight away we fall onto the scallops. And you notice that tide is still ripping. Any takers to help me untangle my pot rope here? <laughs> that is huge. I mean, there's some money's worth there. It's just balled up. I can imagine the fishermen having that on his boat and just thinking, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to push that over the side because I'm not untangling that. <laughs> Now this spot is a lot better than the last. You know, it's 21 minutes already. That went quick. Now I was kind of feeling bad only getting a few scallops on the first one. Um, I'm halfway through my tank, so I decided to turn the camera off and have a good old scallop. But we've run out of good ground. There's not many left. I think they've been overfished. That's not bad. Not bad for me. Uh, probably twice as many as what I had on the first one. I do think a diver has been around here before before me in the last couple of weeks possibly. That's the thing, when you do uh, scalloping, you do tend to go over other people's grounds quite a bit. Oh, what's this? Dead spider crab by the looks of it. That looks a bit weird. What's going on here? I think that potentially could be a breeding sp spider crab. It's a big male underneath and a female on top. Well, this is far too early because this shouldn't really be happening until, I don't know, May maybe. Come on, spit it up. Come on. Did you see the, the male's little flap closing up then? It's quite lucky because he's got two penises. That's a weird thing about crabs. I'm quite sure if lobsters have got two, but certainly crabs definitely have. Thought I'd take a look in the little crevices in these rocks here. Look at this. Loads and loads of common shrimp. Can't believe how many there is. And the water's also too cold, really, or should be too cold this time of year for this many shrimps to be around. They're part of the decapods, which means deco is 10 and pods is feet, so it's 10 footed. Same family as lobsters. Well, anything else has got 10 feet prawn, shrimp, lobster, crab. Pretty cool to see this many. I'll tell you what, I wish I had a macro. It's also sharing its hole with a conger there down the back left. Randomly, read my Sue Daily book, it does actually say that they can share their home with crabs, squat lobsters, and even conger eels. So there we go. Oh, I just wish I had my uh, macro lens, but hey ho, that one's dead, I'll be going in the bin. You know when they die when they got like a rainbow on the back screen. 
and you hear him turning on and off a few times. Oh, he's got a gammy eye. I don't know if it's just closed and he's half asleep or not. Or he's actually damaged his eye. Is this a rear one? Or is this one that's been shocked by a... Oh, no, I've just seen a puff. It's alive. Seven minutes on one dive. That's a long time. I've got a half decent bag. I'm kind of happy with that.
fishy tails aka the B SHIT box hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you on the next tide